60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. What's in the box? What is in the box? What's in the box? What is in the box? We've got a box in a box. There they are. There's my fireballs. Thanks, Robert. Good news. This certifies that your new instrument has passed Sweetwater's 55 point inspection and is ready to play. Thank you for your business. It's signed and everything. They inspected all 55 points of this Gretsch baritone in silver sparkle. Of course, with a wiggle stick. You know I'm excited about that. I've never owned a Gretsch before. This is exciting. You might be thinking right now, doesn't Ryan already have a baritone? I actually have two other baritones. But the reason why I put in an order for this is because I want to have a baritone that people can actually buy. That was the whole reason why I got the Squire baritone in the first place. I've had this Strat parts baritone that I put together for years and years and years, but I wanted to have a baritone that I could play on camera that people could actually buy. So when Squire put out these Cabernita baritones, I bought one and then they immediately sold out and no one's been able to buy them. And that's been a huge bummer for me because I wanna be able to have like a cool baritone that people can actually buy and actually get like a usable opinion on so they can know whether or not it's good. So hopefully the Gretsch will be that. That's my hope anyways, we'll see. Time to tune it up, right? All right, so let's take a look at what we've got here now that I've got it all tuned up. This is a Gretsch Electromatic Jet Baritone. It's a 30 inch scale, which is different from my other two baritones. The Squire and that Fender Parts Baritone that I have are 27 inch. This is it's technically 29 and three quarters, but let's, let's just call it 30 inch. 30 inches is the scale of um, the Fender Bass 6, too. So I wonder if you could string this to be like a Bass 6. That might be uh, worth exploring at some point in the future. It's got humbuckers in it instead of single coils. That's something that I'm excited to have added to my collection, a humbucker-equipped baritone guitar. I wonder how the... Uh, the longer scale length will affect how it feels to me. Will it feel unfamiliar? Will I be just fine with it? I will say right off the bat, I'm probably, I'm definitely going to change the spring in this Bigsby. I always change the springs in Bigsby's every single time. I like the longest spring I can get. I think there's one that's like one and three eighths or something like that. I'll have to look it up. Every time I get a new guitar with a Bixby on it, <laughs> I end up going and buying the longest possible spring because I like the arm to float out quite a bit more so I can grab onto that wiggle stick and really abuse it. Um, I also like that it makes it feel a little bit looser and more fluttery. 
It looks very clean. Simple but classy binding around the edge of the body and the fretboard. The frets are dressed nicely against the edge of the binding. Nice and smooth. I'm not getting hung up anywhere on the frets. And this is a $700 guitar, $699 I think. So right off the bat it's a little bit more expensive than that Squire was new. But those Squires you can't even buy them anymore. And people are trying to flip them. They're scalping them big time on the used market for like twice what I paid for it. I paid like $3.99, I think. People are trying to get upwards of $800 and up for those things now, which is ridiculous, which technically makes this a cheaper guitar than if you wanted to go buy one of those Squire Baritones, unless you could find a retailer that still had some in stock. The tuners felt fine. They didn't feel luxurious or anything like that. They felt like normal tuners or you wouldn't think anything of them <laughs> unless he has some sort of like very specific tastes in tuners. I got the Gretsch strap buttons here. I've never owned a Gretsch. I already said that, but I've never owned a Gretsch. Are these supposed to be like a locking thing or are you supposed to just slide the, the strap over them? I've always thought it was funny that you can hand unscrew them. I wonder what the radius is on this neck. A few stats here from the Sweetwater listing. Mahogany body, bolt-on maple neck, laurel fingerboard with 22 frets, uh, inlays, Gretsch mini buckers, Justomatic bridge, licensed Bigsby. Um, next shape is a thin U. No, U. It's an interesting way to describe that. U-shaped neck. Are they saying it's a me-shaped neck? <laughs> the radius is 12 inches, finally. The information I came here for. Scale length is 29.75. Nut width is 1.685 inches. The nut is synthetic bone. It comes with the Dario 14s to 68s on it. All right, I want to start playing it. See what I can do with this thing. See how it feels. See if I can connect with it, you know? Might as well start off totally clean. I'm not going to turn anything on on the pedal board. <laughs> the bridge pickup here's the middle position got dark and smooth in a hurry I have a feeling that means the neck is gonna be real heavy yeah nice and smooth and dark Let's roll the tone all the way back, see how uh, bassy this gets. Yeah, that gets low. I have a feeling those of you in the cell phone gang can't hear that at all <laughs> on your cell phone speakers. This feels really beefy. It's longer, it's three inches longer than my other two baritones. It just feels bigger. I mean, I know it is bigger, but it feels like a bigger instrument. I think the tension of the strings is way different too from that long scale length.
Yeah, you get some twang on the bridge, but it's all low. It's just heavy, heavy low sounds on that neck pickup. I wouldn't be surprised if you could tune this up as a bass six. Maybe you have to restring it to do that. It's got this super beefy feel that I think could handle like a full on like bass sort of setup. I want to throw some effects at it. Start off with some reverb and tremolo from the Milkman F-stop. That neck pickup is just all low end. Dirt, we gotta do some dirt now. A little bit of light overdrive. Resonant. I'm really feeling the vibrations of this guitar, of the string in my diaphragm. For a second there, it made me think that my, my stomach was growling. <laughs> like, am I that hungry right now? No, it's just the guitar <laughs> resonating against my little tum tum there. Guess I'm gonna have to eat all these fireballs because I'm so hungry. Stop messing around. Let's, I'm gonna do what people wanna hear. I'm gonna hit the fuzz. I'm gonna do some fuzz. This is the B-Tronics Vespa fuzz on the non-octave setting. Here we go. Moment of truth, guys.
lost it. I lost what I was trying to do. <laughs> but man, that is, that is heavy sounding. The low comes out just a lot better when it's running through a fuzz like that. My shoulder is starting to like cramp up on me. I wonder if this sits on my lap in a completely different way than the Squire baritone. The bridge kind of lines up with kind of the meat of my shoulder. Let's see how the squire fits. Yeah, I can already tell this is a smaller guitar. I mean, I know that it's three inches smaller, but the bridge lines up more with my uh, armpit. It's just a different position. I'm just gonna have to spend some time getting used to that, Gretsch. Let's do some sound comparisons. I've been using my two Fender style baritones for so long. It'll be interesting to see how the sound of these pickups compare to the Gretsch and maybe how the feel of the neck and the feel of the string tension is different. <laughs> I can say right off the bat, that's twangier. It feels like such a smaller guitar in comparison. It is, it's, it's three inches different. If you were comparing, you know, a regular scale guitar that was three inches longer than another regular scale guitar, they would feel dramatically different. And that's what I'm getting right now. Yeah, way less twangy. There's way more like bright twang going on with that uh, Squire Telecaster. Especially on the neck pickup. Like this neck pickup is just really dark and bassy. This guitar feels so much bigger. Yeah, the neck pickup on this is way twangier than the Gretsch. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your preferences. And the string tension is totally different too. Yeah, it's a lot stiffer. It's a lot beefier feeling. I mean, the pickups, they just, they sound different. This is not a twang machine the way that Tele is. It's thicker, it's smoother sounding, rounder sounding. It sounds like a humbucker. It sounds like mini buckers versus P90s. I mean, that's the, that's the reality of it. I'm wondering how this would feel tuned down to A instead of B, if that string tension would feel more similar to the Squire. The string tension doesn't bother me. It's just a totally different feeling guitar. Let's try it. I want to tune it down to A. Yeah, that feels a little bit more familiar to me. 
Yeah, the string tension is way more similar to uh, to my other baritone guitars now. Something to keep in mind if you're shopping for baritones. Do you want a 27 inch scale or do you want a 30 inch scale or something in between? I don't know if there's a lot in between. 27 and 30 are kind of the common range. Sloppy. A bit more twang. Yeah, quite a bit more twang off that bridge pickup now. I wonder if the string tension has something to do with twang. Is that part of the recipe for twang? Focusing so much on how it compares to the other baritones in my collection, I haven't even really talked about whether it feels good or not. It feels really nice to me. Like it's a different experience versus my other baritones because of the scale length, because of the dimensions of the body, but it's a very comfortable player. I don't feel like I'm fighting it at all. The action could probably be a tad lower, just for my own personal preference, but it's it's within a normal range. The neck is laser straight, so yeah, it could handle the, uh, the action going down a bit. I'm impressed. These are $6.99 new. It says Gretsch on the headstock, even though it is an Electromatic which is their, you know, it's their Squire line. It's their Epiphone line. But I'm not picking up any you know, deficiencies in the quality of the build or anything like that. I'm sure some people would probably prefer the sound of, you know, different pickups or something like that. People get all tweaky with all their little aftermarket add-ons and stuff like that. <laughs> Sounded dark and weird. Maybe I'm just out of tune. Only slightly. I mean, this thing just came out of the box. I just tuned it up after it's been in the box for who knows how long. What do you guys think? You have any questions about this guitar that I can answer in the comments section? Do you have anything you want to say about it that you want everyone else to know? You know I gotta fuzz this thing. Now that I've got it down to A, <laughs> tuned extra low, I gotta hear that fuzz again.
less fun. Octave setting on the Vespa. How about some like hyper affected stuff? Lots of delay and reverb and some, maybe some chorus. Chorus from the Juliana. Shimverb from the Earthquake Her Devices Astral Destiny. Delay from the DD8. Spring reverb from the Milkman F stop. And some light drive from the Wampler Bell Overdrive.
I always wonder what the neighbors think when I'm doing stuff like that. Just making some serious, ridiculous noise over here. I like it. I like this guitar. It's a very different flavor. I, maybe not very, but it's a different feeling baritone compared to my other two baritones, which, which makes me happy. I like having variety. I like having things that feel different. Um, I'm honestly thinking about selling the Squire because no one can buy it. Unless you buy it for ridiculous marked up prices on the used market, you can't get that guitar anymore. I hope that Fender puts out more baritones, especially more Squires, because clearly people want them. But if you want something longer with a humbucker sound, but a classy kind of throwback retro look, I'm kind of stoked on this. I'm really enjoying it. I'll have to figure out what it means for me as far as the sound of the pickups. Is that something that I'm going to like? Am I going to be one of those people that wants to go on pickup journeys with their new Gretsch? <laughs> right now, I'm feeling just fine with them. I don't feel any reason to swap them out. Uh, the only thing I'll want to change on this right off the bat is the spring on the Bigsby, but I do that with every Bigsby. Otherwise, I really like it. I'm excited about this. So anyways, huge thanks to Sweetwater for uh, listening to my request. When I told them the situation, I told them, I was like, hey, I want to cover a baritone that people can buy. Can you help me out? I'm looking at this Gretsch. And they're like, okay, we think we can make that happen. So huge thanks to Sweetwater. They made this video possible. They made it possible for me to have this in my collection so I can feature it in all the videos that I do. You know what I like to do. You know I like to throw baritone at the end of videos with whatever fuzz and high gain thing I'm messing around with. Now I have a different flavor to mess with and it's one you can actually buy. <laughs> all right, this, this outro has been going on forever. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked. I have a Wiggle Stick shirts now. You wanna celebrate Wiggle Sticks? I have a shirt for that. And uh, you know what? Stay grounded. Bye everybody. I'm gonna have some fun just jamming.